Iltapäivää. Uh, any non-Finnish speaking people here? One. There's always one. <laughs> Two. Okay. So we'll do this in Finglish this time. Good afternoon. My name is Petri Niemi from Tieturi Oy, and my colleague Tommy Terasvirta is also here. And he's the only, actually the one who gets the credit for this presentation. I'm just here to yap away for the intro. Location, location, location. For those of you who don't know Tieturi yet, we are the, a training company here in Finland. Offices in Nordic countries, Sweden, Finland mostly. Uh, largest in the Nord Nordic countries at the moment. Uh, we have a stand at the other end of the corridor, so if you wish to visit that after this session, please do so. At the moment, Gold Partners with Microsoft. Location, 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 right? So this is the big hype nowadays everywhere. Uh, all kinds of applications can benefit from location. Map, weather, restaurants, social uh, networking, any kind of route services for public transportation and so on and so on. It's basically whatever you can think of. You can probably use this technology one way or the other. It might be something that's not visible to the user of the application. So something that your application collects in the background, information for marketing research or whatever you wish. So this is not something you have to show to the user. You need to ask for permission, of course. So you can't do it without the user knowing it, but you don't have to show it in any way. Uh, at the moment, the Windows Phone API or SDK provides two kinds of ways of using location-based services. First of all, you have the API to get the position, right? So you get the latitude, longitude, altitude, wherever the user is going, direction, and that sort of information. It's pretty standard, and you'll find similar APIs all over the place. For example, the HTML5 geolocation API is fairly similar in the way you use it. And then, of course, you want to show user where he is or she is, some kind of a mapping service. So the raw data, 60 degrees this way, 24 degrees that way, it doesn't really tell you anything. Put the user on the map, and for that you have several services. Of course, Bing Maps is the natural choice on a Windows phone. Very, very easy to use. Tommy actually has a demo application. He'll show you some code, what it looks like, how to get the position, how to put it on the map, and off you go. For 30 minutes, it's very simple. But if you want to know more, please come and talk to us uh, at any point today if you see us around here. Red shirts for Tier 3 people. Tommy is in blue because he's the official speaker today. All right, so the GeoWatcher API gives you the location. And you have multiple sources where to get the location. And you can actually choose whether to try to get the highest possible accuracy or do you want to save some power, save energy on the phone, and be sufficient with less accuracy. So whether you have GPS or cell tower-based location or Wi-Fi, you cannot exactly say which to use. You can say high accuracy or default. Those are the two options at the moment. If you say high accuracy, of course, GPS is the best. And that's what you have on the phones, typically. And like I said, it's very, very intuitive API. If you know how to use one geolocation API somewhere, you'll probably pick this up in an instant. So it's very, very easy. Latitude, longitude, altitude, speed, accuracy, timestamp, and so on. One thing that's missing at the moment is uh, reverse geocoding. So getting the address by the um, uh, latitude, longitude. For that, you need to use some sort of a web service. For example, Bing Maps has a web service for that. OK, so that's my introduction. Tommy, okay. with a demo application and some code. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that was quick, but that's fine. So welcome on my behalf as well. Uh, so let's go look at a little bit of code. Uh, as soon as I can work this thing out. OK, it's not my computer. Sorry about this. Finally, yes. So what we have here is a fairly simple piece of code that we can run. So at that point, we have two parts of the demonstration. First, I'll run little position info 
checking. So at this point, what we can do is we can check the status of the service. So at that point, are we initializing? Do we actually have a connection? Do we fail? Because at this point, if I whip up my phone and try to get GPS data, uh, I'd say no luck. Uh, and at that point, if I don't have cell data, okay, no luck. I don't have any possession data, so that's something that can take place. And of course, a little bit like latitude, longitude, uh, horizontal accuracy, speed, altitude, vertical accuracy, timestamp when we actually got the data and so forth. So that's very fairly simple uh, piece of information we can get. Now, the emulator is a pretty nice tool, so that means I don't have to find me a camera to show you the phone. The problem with it is that if I press the track in here right now, what happens, it's already ready. So it's fairly quick. And uh, taking the same example, and if I were to uh, use my phone, at that point it would take me like 10, 15 seconds to actually be ready. So it depends on what else is happening on the phone. So there's a little bit of initialization, and especially the GPS, uh, the data rate from the satellites, that takes a long, long time. Uh, remembering back when I was in the States, like 10 years ago, driving some point. So at that point, taking the car from the garage, driving it outside, uh, stepping out on the curve, uh, bad habit, smoke a cigarette, come back to the car and see if it actually found, uh, found me enough satellite. So that's just the data rate, and the same thing applies to the phones as well. Nice thing about uh, the geoprocessing information is that it's actually assisted GPS that we use on the Windows phone. So it means that it does get the information from the cell towers before, and that's the reason I have the horizontal accuracy in here as well. So uh, it tells me how accurate it, it thinks the information is, and it keeps closing, closing, closing. And uh, the fun thing I was showing this uh, to Peter the first time uh, with a phone, and it gave me the accuracy of 25 kilometers initially. And then it went down to 350 with the cell data, and then when you have the GPS, it go goes to a few meters and so forth. So that would be the accuracy. Okay. So uh, I'm not moving anywhere, so it's not going to be changing. That's what we get uh, in here. Now with the phone, it would uh, change the accuracy a little bit. So if we start looking at the code a little bit, so uh, UI is fairly simple, and uh, there's nothing about the geopositioning information in here, so let's switch to the actual uh, C-sharp code in here, where we have, have, have the actual logic. So we, ha okay, yeah. Most buttons are different order than I'm used to. So if I do a uh, uh, second button clicking, so it's just that. So we have a geo-coordinate watcher. So that's the main class for actually getting the API. And uh, with the geo positioning information, we can actually fetch it. But like in so many APIs uh, in here as well, we have a possibility, and actually the only way to do it is to get it asynchronously. Because if you start waiting in an application for 15 seconds to get any kind of information, that's just too long. Uh, so at that point, we need an asynchronous API. So what we do is that we uh, initialize the watcher. And uh, at this point, we say that the accuracy is high. That's actually trying to get the information from the satellites, the GPS information. The default would typically use the cell towers because uh, what it aims at is the power. So it's trying to save the power and at that point not having to uh, uh, run the GPS and uh, check that so it saves the power so that would be default. Movement threshold, one thing. Now how often you actually get the information depends on that setting. So if you set it to zero, what's the, uh, is the default, so at that point you Pretty much fire it like once a second, uh, get the information whenever you move a little bit. So at that point, you would get, uh, uh, get it fired. 10 meters, a little bit better. I think Microsoft uh, suggests that you would use 20 meters as the uh, movement threshold, so uh, you wouldn't get that, that often that information. But of course, it depends on the application, what would be good for you. And then we have a couple of uh, events that we're setting in here. So uh, for the geopositioning, status changed and also uh, the actual position changed. Uh, so once we're done from uh, the initialization, when we're ready and so forth, and then the actual uh, information uh, uh, over in here. And then what we'll do is we'll actually start it.
So right now we start getting the information eventually at some point. So what kind of information do we get? Uh, well, the status changed. I'm not really using it that much, just to say that I'm initializing ready and so forth. But the API, like Peter said, it's very, very simple. So at this point, what we get is we just get with the event arguments. Uh, I can get the latitude, longitude, horizontal accuracy, and so forth. So that's the basic simple API. And it keeps giving me triggering that particular event until I stop my GeoWatcher, or then uh, I just don't get the information, so I'm, I'm not moving. So that's the API. Pretty simple. Okay. So with this API, yeah, we can do certain things. But okay, eventually I will find it. Yeah, here we go. But if I do get the information, uh, latitude, longitude, like I showed you, okay, so what? Anyone care to venture a guess of those coordinates where they actually are? Don't have to, but just an idea. The first one is actually Redmond. Okay. Next one in the middle of the Atlantic. And the third one would be Hel in Helsinki. So, give you a kind of idea. Once you start looking at those uh, a little bit more, you'll notice the negative value is positive, so you know which hemisphere are and so forth. But anyway, you can do certain things. But what we'd like to do with those is possibly work with a map control, so actually show it graphically to the user where we are, or then just use the information like say, okay, we are right here, let's find the address for this particular location. Or then if you want to use the uh, latitude, longitude, longitude, you also have to, uh, uh, information so that we can send an address to a service that gives us back the coordinates for that particular location. So those would be uh, very simple. And these come with the Bing Maps API. So we have the map control that comes from there, so graphical user uh, interface control. We have launchers. So the launchers are the API in the Windows phone where you actually launch another application. So you leave your application and you move on to the map application. Uh, we can do this. And then we have the services that require accessing typically, for example, web services from the BIM, BIM site. So we can do SOAP or we can do RESTful services and we have a few other possibilities. And those are not Windows phone specific. So it means that if you're doing Silverlight on, <coughs> on the desktop or someplace else, you'd be using the same exact APIs in there as well. So there are a few changes uh, for the Bing Max API for the Windows phone. For example, how do you zoom with, an, uh, with a map control? Well, use the gestures. So uh, uh, trying to do pinch on a desktop, you don't really want to do that. But for, uh, for the Windows phone API, uh, uh, control, you have a few additional uh, events for those types of services. But other than that, it's pretty much the same as we have anywhere else uh, for the Silverlight. Okay. So the map control. If you start from scratch, so it means that you open up Visual Studio and you want to have a map control in your UI, uh, it takes about five seconds to create a new project, and then it takes about three seconds to get a map control on the UI. So it's simple. You uh, open the toolbox, you drag and drop it to your UI, and that's it. But what you want to do with it is you might want to show some information, some data. and. Uh, to be able to use any of the Bing Maps services, you have to register as a developer, a Bing Maps developer. And if you don't know where to do that, you just try with a map control, and it will, gi will give you uh, information saying basically that you have uh, your creden credentials are not valid. So what you need to do is you need to go to a certain website and uh, at that point register as a developer. And then with every single use of a Bing Mass control, you actually have to pass those credentials to the service. And that's not something that some people like for the reason that if you deploy a Windows Phone application, what you need to do is you need to use your own personal key 
for the Bing Map service, and you need to include it in the Zap package, so the installation package for the Windows Phone application, and then the end users can use that map service and uh, uh, actually access the Bimbax information using your key. So it's a developer key. Uh, it may not cost anything. We'll get back to that one uh, a little bit later. But to get started, you don't have to uh, fork up any dough. So it's, it's, it's free. So with the map, we can uh, zoom it, pan it uh, with the UI. And also what we can do is we can also set the viewport in code. So basically same zoom level, say where the center is, or then uh, have, for example, a few pins and say, okay, I'd like to show these for a uh, few pins uh, uh, with a map. So it uh, sets in there. Then what we can do is we can uh, add images. So there's a map layer. And for the map layer, you can add images, you can add polygons, polylines, and so forth. So if you want to have a little bit more information uh, in the map as well. So all that is part of the map control in the UI part. So that's simple. Ping, Bing map launchers, that's even more simple. So if you've done any launchers, uh, you know how to do this. So we have the directions, and uh, then we have Bing maps tags. That basically launches the maps application, and the maps application either shows you the current location or shows you the route. But the problem, of course, is uh, you're no longer in your application. If you don't care, okay, use that. So instead of having to come up with a map control, having to go and find a nice route from one location to another one, and then display it in your map control and so forth, all you need to do is just launch the maps application, set up the route, and uh, it shows you it with the native platform-specific maps uh, application. So that's pretty simple. So let's leave that to something else. So geocode service. So the Bing Max API, basically we have the geocoding, which means that we can uh, uh, resolve addresses either from an address to a geocoordinate possession or vice versa, so do the reverse, reverse thing. We can do searching, so if you want to search for restaurants or something like that close by, so there's also uh, an API for this one, searching API, and routing, of course, so uh, finding a location from, uh, or route from one location to another one. APIs, so rest and so forth, so choose the one you want. And uh, the example we have is using the SOAP, which is the easiest to set up. So basically, all you need to do is just add a service reference. And with the service reference, the Visual Studio takes care of creating uh, the stubs and skeletons and so forth, creates the classes. And uh, you just use those. We'll see that it's not many lines of code that we can uh, uh, work, uh, we need to work with. So let's go to the quick, simple demonstration. OK. So switch to the map page. So uh, let's actually run it. So it uh, might be a little bit nicer. So stop this, go back, and open a maps control. Now for this demonstration, I added a slider in here, because you can assume that trying to pinch uh, with a single mouse is kind of tricky. And since it's Petri's uh, laptop, I didn't want to uh, break his uh, mouse drivers by having a couple of mouse, uh, mice in there and uh, doing the pinching. So what we'll do is uh, we can just uh, zoom in here, uh, out and in here. We also have possibility to add a pin in here. So it added a pin. Let's go a little closer. So the pin has the same size. Uh, we can check where we are. So that location happens to be the Atoris headquarters in uh, Helsinki, Tamasaren Katu, hard-coded coordinates, of course, uh, for this presentation. Uh, so uh, anyway, that looks good. But if we do zoom someplace else uh, or move someplace else, okay, let's use the uh, proper way. I'm trying to find Tampere. That's where uh, me and Petri come from. Actually, Petri comes from Lempala, but that's, um, <laughs> uh, well, close enough. Well, Let's see where we are right now. So right now we're in Helsinki, India, uh, 146. So that wasn't hard-coded, the Tamasaren Kato. So it actually fits it from the Bing services by looking at the center location for the map and uh, using the services found the address for that particular location. OK. So some people say it might be pretty neat. So that's an interesting, so put another pin in here. So pretty simple application. And uh, once we see the code, it's even more simple. So uh, switch to the code. Okay. Change the co uh, 
a little bit uh, bigger. So we have a reverse zero code request. And then we have a service client. So that's the SOAP service client. And then uh, we'll, we'll have a, a tax request. We have a little bit of setting of the map. And uh, then we have the map sender. And with the map sender, we just set it, like I said, hard coded to our uh, headquarters or uh, main office. There's a little bit of zoom level. There's a little bit of adding a pin into the uh, map. So as we can see, not that many lines of code. And of course, if you want to fetch the coordinates someplace, put a pin there, uh, fairly simple. If you want to store these to a collection, pretty simple, and so forth, not that much code. So what I hit in here is the geocode service setup. And the setup is basically going into creating a new request and using the same exact credentials as I need to use for the Bing Maps. So even these need you to register as a developer and then use those credentials. So the credentials are actually another clause which only hides it. Okay, they're my credentials, so for some reason I wasn't that comfortable showing my credentials to uh, all of you, so uh, I hid it in here uh, anyway. Then we have the actual uh, geocode service client, so the SOAP client, and then the reverse geocode completed, so actually fetching the address. So there's the event handler, an asynchronous service again. So once it's done, uh, that would be then the delegate setting, and uh, we'll find, uh, find the code actually getting the information. Okay. So the code, how do you start uh, actually fetching? So I first get a location from the center of the map. Once I have that particular location, all I need to do is go into the client, use that request that I set the location for, and then make the asynchronous request. And since I set my delegate for, for the event, so when, I ret when it returns the address, I get the response, and then from the response, I can get the results, and the results, I can get my display name for the first result. So I'm, uh, since I'm looking for a single address, uh, uh, it's a, a, a collection, so the first item, just get the display name, and that, that gave me the address for uh, the location I was looking for. I did tell you it's not that many lines of code. And see, some people say it's a fairly neat demonstration because uh, not that many lines of code, but still certain inter interesting things uh, we can uh, display with that. And uh, it's pretty simple to take it forward, uh, move on, and do something really interesting with that, uh, 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 with, with it. Okay. So that was the demonstration. And now we have about five minutes left in here, and we have one slide, uh, two slides actually. So first of all, a couple of practical points. Like Petri said, what you need to do is you need to ask the user for the location data to be used, so if it's okay. And you need to do it once. So the first time you launch your application, you can ask the user, and <clears throat> if the user says OK, you store that res uh, setting, and uh, then the next time you launch it, you don't have to ask it anymore. But you still need to ask it. Otherwise, you don't pass the validation uh, to actually get your application submitted to the marketplace. And uh, there's the capability as well. Uh, remember the bat battery friendliness. So if you're not really in need of getting one second firing uh, of those events, so okay, don't do that. And then if you don't really need the highest accuracy, don't do it, so it means that you're saving the battery. Uh, and then remem rem remember that we might not have the position information, and uh, we can use the background in background agents. So that's most of the things that you do with the device uh, uh, sensors you can't access from the back, uh, background agents, but with the background agents you can get it. So it's cast about every 10 minutes or so to the phone, uh, so you don't have to wait for 15 seconds in a background agent that can only run 10 seconds uh, to get the information. But then again, we do have the timestamp as well, so if you want to see how accurate it is. But then again, if you have a background agent running once every 30, 40 minutes, uh, so 10 minutes is okay for, uh, for that accuracy. Now, the developer registration is free, but there is a limit to how much you're using. So if you write a killer application, uh, use the BMAC ser services, uh, you run 
to the limit. So at that point, you need to get a commercial uh, uh, account with the BMAC services. That does cost some money, but uh, you can find the information from uh, the Ping Math portal, so it gives you all the, uh, uh, all the information you need, but there is a limit. And then, of course, uh, the registration key. So you might want to uh, consider if you want to have it with the application. You could, of course, have like a, a proxy, your own service, uh, and through that proxy over there, you have your key, and that would fetch the information from the Bing Map. So that, that's all was possible. Okay. Now for the f uh, final, since some may be interested, so uh, okay, there was a little bit of ruckus of this. So does Microsoft really collect the location data and store it in its own servers? Well, it depends. If you have a Windows phone, and if you actually did install the latest update, no, Microsoft doesn't. But it did before this. So, okay. Uh, I guess you've noticed in many ways, Microsoft follows the same path as Apple in good and bad. And then certain things it does better and uh, but so forth. But that was one of the things that it also does. Uh, so, yes, they did collect the data. Uh, so, first of all, the... Uh, getting the information from the cell towers. So at that point, your phone does not know where it is by getting a cell tower ID. So it needs to use a cloud service to get the information where that particular cell tower actually resides in the world. So for example, those information, pieces of information, Microsoft was collecting, even if you said that you didn't want to pass the information to Microsoft. But if you install the latest updates about once a month, once a month, Okay, you're fine. No data sent to Microsoft, unless you say it's okay. We can trust Microsoft, so yeah, you can just send it. Okay. So, that would be it. Uh, we have about two minutes for questions, I guess. And uh, there are a few microphones, but uh, I can repeat your question, so please. Okay, uh, uh, that was a good question. So in the beginning of the presentation, the, it was mentioned that the reverse geocoding is not possible, but then later on, we actually showed that it's possible. What that referred to is that there is a civic address resolver class that is not part of the Bing Maps. And uh, if you go into documentation, it says that supported platforms, Windows Phone 7.0 and 7.1. Luckily, somebody put in the remarks a tip that it's, the class is not implemented. Uh, so uh, that is not possible, and it's been something that's uh, uh, in the ecosystem. Lots of people have been asking for the past 18 months, when will it be available, because that doesn't require the Bing Maps API. So that was the uh, <coughs> kind of mishap in here. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Awfully quiet. But uh, I guess we can end the presentation here, not actually go past our time. Surprise, surprise. So uh, I thank you. Petri thanks you. You've been a good audience. And I uh, hope you actually got some useful information from, from this. Thank you.